Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing room. Today's video is the process of making this wedding dress. If you guys are interested in purchasing this wedding dress, I'll have it available in sizes 2 through 18 in black and ivory. So check the description box below for more information. Now let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have my skirt pieces cut here. This is my center back and my side back. And then I also have my front pieces cut here. And these pieces, I didn't show how to make the patterns here um, because they're the same patterns that I always make my videos. So these are, these are just plain princess seam um, skirt pieces that are extended down into the train and I didn't make them have that much of a flare. And then I also have um, lining pieces cut identical to these, except they are an inch shorter at the hem. I'm sorry about the lighting, guys. The sun is literally getting ready to go down. So um, I excuse the lighting, but I want to get started on making this dress. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the skirt, the main skirt, and also the skirt lining. I'm just going to sew up the princess seams. And I'm going to sew up the center back seam as well and leave my, um, I'm going to leave my seam open above this notch here. That's where my zipper is going to stop. And then I'm going to try it on my dress form to make sure that it fits. And then if it fits good, which it should, I'm going to sew my side seams and then I'll meet you back there. Okay, so I've got my skirt assembled and I sewed all of my seams with a two and a half centimeter um, seam allowance to account for the stretch of the fabric because it didn't um, interface it at all. So it still has all of its stretch and my back seam allowance, um, come on, focus. There, okay, my back seam allowance for my center back seam is um, three centimeters. What I'm going to do now is work on my bodice pieces. These are my bodice pieces and my sleeve. And I have marked, um, so there's going to be an under bodice that falls along this guideline. And then there's going to be the over bodice that um, is the whole piece. So I'm going to cut the under bodice from, um, I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do a transparent bodice or not. No, I don't think so. Okay, so I'm going to cut the under bodice from the satin and the lining and everything, and then the over bodice is going to be cut from lace. And I'll do that, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all cut up. Okay, so I have assembled the main layer, and I also steamed it. That's why it looks all nice and smooth. I got a steamer for Christmas, so I'm really happy. I've been using it like crazy. Um, I didn't show how I assembled this because I make literally the same base of a gown in all of my videos. So this is just a plain princess seam bodice and a princess seam skirt that I extended. And I just put it together and I cut the lining identical. Let me show you the back. So there's the back. I left a three centimeter seam allowance in the back for adjustments. So what I'm gonna do next is assemble um, my lining pieces and then I'm going to um, hmm. yeah I'm gonna assemble my lining and then press that out give it a steam it set it to the side and I think I'm actually going to work on my overlay for my overlay excuse my mess y'all I'm like working 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 but I'm trying to give this all of my time so I've cut each of my pattern pieces out of the lace and I've also cut the trim off of the bottom because I'm going to reapplique the trim on once um, everything is together. Then I took my pattern pieces and I thread traced all the way around all of my lace and I used purple for my notches. So, um, and I did this for all of my pattern pieces. So all I did was lay my pattern piece on top of this, cut it out, and well not cut it out, but um, thread trace it around, and then cut it out so that I'm not cutting through any of my appliques because we're going to attach this to the dress with applique seams. So what I'm gonna do is work on the base of the overlay bodice, which is going to be made out of tulle, and it's also gonna have sleeves, 
and I'll show the process of that because I haven't done anything like that on my channel before. Um, look at Captain Crazy. Go, go. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to get um, all the fabric and everything ready to do the overlay and I will be right back. Okay, so here are my bodice um, pieces for my overlay. And I've already cut all of my satin pieces from where it's marked under bodice. That's what that is. But all of the pieces that are over that are my overlay. So I'm going to cut this first out of a tool base. I'm going to be using this tool fabric, which is also from Lace to Love. And then I'm going to overlay that with my lace. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it from tool. And then I'm going to assemble all of my seams. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my bodice overlay assembled. I have my sleeves attached. I'm going to um, clean up the seam allowance for my sleeves. And then I'm also going to do just a stay stitch around the entire neckline um, to keep it from warping when I do um, the fittings and stuff. Now, I have no idea how this is going to go on to here. That's why... It looks like this because I had put the lining on there and then I was like, oh my God, I have to put the overlay on. So then I took the lining off. So I guess I'll just work with the overlay first. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, do the stay stitch and then put it onto the dress form. Okay, so I have my overlay on and oh my goodness, it looks so much better in person than it looks through the camera, but it's all right. So I just kind of pinned it on here. Um, I haven't cleaned up the seams or anything yet. I just wanted to see if, if it fits. Um, and it does. This is the back. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. Because, hold on. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this neckline here. Because this is level with this. So this could be turned in as one. Then that can be turned in as one. And then I can do these two separately. This is all the trim that I cut off, and this would be like, obviously going to have to cut some relief cuts up in here. And I'm going to cut some relief cuts to lay this flat. This is really rough, guys. I'm just pinning it to see if I like it. Okay, so for the front here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to baste, um, I'm going to baste my tool layer onto, well, I'm gonna fix this first, and then I'm gonna baste my tool layer from my princess seam down here, and the same on that side. I'm gonna baste that, and then in the back I'm going to baste it just here yes I think that will do sorry guys I know I usually have it like together but um, this is a total experiment to me I usually don't do bodices like this but it's a happy challenge so yeah I'm gonna do that and then I'm also going to hand baste this down here I'm not really worried about what this is gonna look like because this tool here is just the base for all of my lace applique and everything that's gonna go over it. So I'm gonna do that and then I am probably going to, um, yes, so once I do that, I'm going to line it, so reline it, and then um, I'll show you what it looks like after that's done. So I have my lining fully assembled here. 
I have my hanging loops and my side seams and I just top stitch down my waistline seam to make sure it's not going to be flapping around. And I also put my cups in the same way I always do so I didn't show it. Now I'm going to add my boning and to be honest this dress was actually quite heavy. So in hindsight I would use um, spiral steel boning to support this dress because this plastic boning was just flapping everywhere. But I used like literally all of my last boning to make the stress so that's why there's a mixing match of boning here this is a sample gown i don't want to hear no comments okay so this is what it looks like when i'm starting to pin um my uh lace onto here and i'm also starting to do the skirt please excuse the lighting here filming black fabric is such a headache um so please excuse the lighting here but uh, basically what I'm doing is just pinning my center front panel on. And then once I have that pinned on, I like to secure it in the middle first. And then once I have like the sides and everything pinned on, and then I put my side front pieces on there as well, pin those in place. And then I just make sure to um, base along my seam lines. And then I took it off and then did the back pieces as well. So um, you just want to make sure that you're lining up your... Um, thread traced lines when it comes to uh, like this the princess seams just to make sure that everything is uh, lining up at the top as well as the bottom now I'm appliquing on the trim on the bodice part I already did one side off camera because I wanted to make sure that I liked the direction that I was going in and now I'm doing the other side I have my back piece all assembled and I have the center back seams pressed open. Now I'm just appliquing on my, um, my lace pieces and I'm basing them at the side seams as well as at the center back seam. And then I put the train piece on as well and just did the same thing. So just base it around the, um, the side seams and across the bottom. So this is what it looks like. I just have it pinned in place. It's not secured or anything. Uh, in hindsight, I will actually just buy extra lace. Um, so I won't have to do this next time. But, you know, we have to work with what we got. Okay, so I have my skirt back here. I just have it folded in half. And I have all of the sides basted here. And I've basted down this bit here. Don't worry about how it looks now because it's going to be covered with um some appliques kind of like this to where it'll be like a border um right there so you won't see that um so what i'm going to do now is take my front skirt which is currently still on my dress form i'm going to take my front skirt off of here and i'm going to sew the side seams process of sewing the side seam of my lace overlay and I said I'm going to do it by hand because I just broke a needle like a dummy because I forgot that this is fully beaded so I'm probably going to break a lot more needles so I decided to hand sew it but lucky accident so I decided to make sure all of my seams line up like this so when I sew the side seam through the middle of the applique it still kind of looks like a full applique there at the side seam so I'm going to make sure all down the side seam that these are lined up where they can be lined up so that I can get more happy accidents. Okay, so I have everything pinned on the bodice. I know black is so hard to see, guys. But I have everything pinned on the bodice. So now I have my dress form on my table and the skirt's on too. This is just, put the skirt's on, everything. Um, so now I'm going to call it a night and spend the day tomorrow hand sewing everything on here. I'm not going to glue it this time because I noticed with the Guterman glue, um, if you're not using white fabric, it shows up like a residue. So when you're using fabrics other than white, um, it's, gonna, it's a good idea to hand sew everything on. And I'm just spending a couple of hours 
um, hand sewing all these appliques down. Like I said earlier, I cannot use uh, the Gouda glue that I usually use because I've noticed that with fabrics that are not white, it leaves a residue that I am not trying to have to um, deal with. So I decided to take the time and hand sew everything on, which was actually kind of therapeutic. So I finished hand sewing on um, all of the bodice appliques. Um, and then I put some trim that would be like the border for the bodice. So I need to cut this out and sew this on. Then I just started appliquing the sleeve. Um, I cut the sleeve out and I added some appliques here as well as the little trim at the bottom. So all this needs to get sewn on now. And I also started to applique back on the trim here. Um, thank you, baby. Applique back on the trim here at the bottom of the lace skirt, which this, uh, I'm trying to figure out if I want to cut it out or not, because this is what it looks like when it's not cut out. But I think I need that stability to keep it on there. So I may leave it on there and I'm going to um, pin that all the way around the skirt at the bottom. And then after that, all we have to do is do the other sleeve, finish the back. The back is looking crazy. I need to applique the bodice um, and then finish the trim, put the zipper in and then figure out this situation here, which this is gonna be my last thing that I do because I'm trying to figure out, I want this to have a button closure here. Um, so I want, I don't know what I want. But I think this is just turning out so pretty. I'm so excited to um, finish this up. So I'm gonna do a whole bunch of hand sewing. I'm gonna spend the whole day hand sewing. Then I might work on another project um, so I can get a video up this week. Yeah. Okay, so I haven't filmed anything for the dress so far because I'm still on the same step. I have hand sewn all of this side on and then I just, just finished tacking on the trim at the bottom and then I just finished applicating the back. So all this needs to be hand sewed. The sleeves need to be finished. The same goes for this side. I've got to finish this sleeve. Um, and then get the zipper in the back and the trim applique on the bottom. So I'm going to continue to work away on hand sewing this thing and I will probably meet you guys back when it's time to do the trim. Cause I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do that. And then I have to do the hem as well. I'm not putting horse or anything in it, just a plain narrow rolled hem. I'm just gonna cut it down so that it's gonna be shorter than the, the skirt here. But yeah, I really love the way it's looking. I'm looking at the camera now and I notice that these two, oh. I was gonna say this is not this is not on there yet <laughs> but it is so pretty guys this is one of my favorite gowns that i'm making um and i'm thinking about making it in white too to put into my collection huh. we'll see so like i said i'll check in back with you guys um after i finish um with all of the hand sewing on the bodice so I'm going to take a pair of tiny scissors, I love these scissors, and I'm going to cut off the extra lace. Of course, there's a car driving by. I'm going to cut off the extra lace um, for all of my uh, trim pieces. And now I am just appliquing the trim on. So I'm showing you here really quickly. I have the bottom of the skirt and then I have the trim piece and I'm just aligning them until um, the bottom of the skirt is kind of invisible. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pin in place all around. And this is what it looks like when everything is pinned. I like it a lot. Um, like I said, in hindsight, I actually will cut a full tool layer as the base um, for the front too and then do this onto the tool instead of um, having the lace just by itself because I think it'll be more stable that way. Um, but that's all part of making gowns you've never made before, experimenting and knowing what to do the next time. So I'm confident the next time I make this dress, it will look a thousand times better than it looks now. And I think right now it looks bomb. And I love this beaded lace from Lace to Love. The link to this fabric that I use will be in the description box below. So go ahead and check them out. 
But now we need to stop admiring our work and actually finish. So I turned on Netflix. I'm watching The Witcher right now. And I watched a full season of that while I hand sewed all of the work of this dress. So that's how long it took to hand sew all of this. It took a full season of a TV show. Um, but anyway, I'm just making sure I'm going through all of the, the corners of the edges of this um, lace trim. I'm trying to make my stitches as invisible as possible, but I'm not shying away. Uh, um, like I'm not, you know, going all the way around the lace piece just to have my thread be absolutely invisible. I think uh, when you examine some of these dresses, you do see some threads that secure the dresses on there. So I'm not shy about that. And I also wanted to show you guys how I get my hand sewing done so fast. I thread a whole bunch of needles and put them on my pressing cam and just keep grabbing them. And then when they all run out, then I thread some more and I just recorded this as a time lapse so you guys can see now here I'm at the center back and of course the lace didn't line up how I expected it to so what I'm going to do to correct this is I folded one of the flaps back and then I have an applique here cut out notice that I trimmed all around the edges and then I left one corner with um a tool still on it that's going to be our anchor for the side that's going to be anchored onto it pretty much so i'm going to lay it here and i'm trying to blend it in with a pattern of the um the lace that we already have here and i'm just going to go ahead and pin it in place once i have that secured enough i'm going to fold over the flap that we folded back previously and i'm going to match the bottom of the trim so that the scallop at the bottom is kind of consistent i know it didn't fall at an ideal place but we got to do what we got to do um in hindsight to correct this i would just make sure that um to measure out my trim and everything before i uh cut everything out to make sure that i have the right length and that it ends in the right places but you know experiments now i just went and took my um dress over to the sewing machine and hemmed both layers so i hemmed my lining layer and my main layer with a rolled hem okay so we're almost to the finish line but now we need to finish off this back and instead of using a zipper because i'm just i have zipper anxiety so i decided to go ahead and put in a corset back instead okay so i'm going to start by measuring how long my opening is because i need to figure out how many loops I need as well as how big my modesty panel needs to be. So it looks like I have about 15 and a half inches. And this currently closes at the center back and I want about a six inch, six inch, about a five and a half inch opening here. So I'm going to make a modesty panel that is about six inches by 15 inches okay so this is the remaining satin that i have after i cut out the rest of the dress and i'm going to cut my modesty panel from this i need two of them because i need the main layer and then the lining so that it'll be pretty on the inside and some people put boning in it but i decided not to bone this um I think it'll be totally fine and I don't have any more boning <laughs> so maybe that's why I have it folded here folded in half and then I'm going to fold it in half again so I can cut two at the same time this is slightly wasteful but this is such a small square of fabric all it's not even a yard so it'll be all right so I'm going to cut two here I'm going to measure down my 15 eight inches and then I'm going to measure over my I, I can't remember how much it was y'all can see here how much it is and then um, place a mark there and then I'm also going to measure in an inch from the bottom because I want it to be two inches thick at the bottom and I'm just going to place a mark there and then I'm just going to cut from the bottom up to the top and we have our modesty panel and then I want to cut the top open as well So now we've got our modesty panels 
cut one of these from interfacing though. Okay, so now that I have one interface, I'm going to uh, place them right sides together and I'm going to sew them, leaving the bottom open so that we can turn it out. And also after you finish sewing, you wanna clip your corners uh, to make sure that it turns out smoothly and you have nice and pointy corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. At the same time, I'm going to cut lots of bias strips and I'm also gonna sew these together. These are gonna be our loops for our corset. And then I'm also gonna cut a um, two inch thick and super long uh, strip of fabric on the straight grain. And that's gonna be our, um, our, la our lacing. Yeah, it'll be, that'll be our lacing for our corset. I also used some 3 eighths of an inch ribbon here and I'm cutting them the length of my corset opening. I'm cutting two of them because obviously we have two sides. And this is going to be the base for our loops. Now I didn't show in depth how to do the loops because it's so freaking annoying. But pretty much what I did was mark a centimeter down and then a centimeter um, Every, I marked every centimeter and each of my loops are two centimeters wide, but well, they were supposed to be, but they didn't turn out like that. Uh, usually I buy this already made, but I decided to make it this time. And this is what it looks like when I have it all sewn in and then you just finish off the lining like how you would do if it's a zipper. And this is what it looks like. And I also slip stitched my lining down after this and it was a headache, y'all. Makes me want to buy a thimble, which I don't know why I don't have, but makes me want to buy one. And I think it looks nice and neat um, besides my fugly loops. But, you know, it, it's a sample gown and it functions. And now it's time to finish off the trim here at the top. I figured out how to do the um, this side here it had to be like spliced into two pieces. So I took one piece and I um, applicate that onto the front trying to ma uh, match the curve here so it looks like it's continuous and then i just made sure to lay it nice and flat there like at the underarm seam so that it looks neat and then i made sure to smooth it over the arm and just applicate that on i think you guys can probably see it better than i'm attempting to explain it horribly And boom, it is done. And you guys would have known if I didn't tell you, right? <laughs> no, I'm not that good. But I think it looks pretty good um, for now. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and hand sew everything on, including finishing off this sleeve that I put off to the end because I just, I don't know, sleeves hate me and I hate sleeves equally. Um, and then I also finished the border at the back that I was telling you guys about. Uh, you guys can see it. There's like a thousand pins down there. So I just went over to my table, finished watching my witcher, and hand sewed everything on, and the dress was complete. So this is my finished product, and I'm more than proud of myself for taking this on, especially um, knowing that I hand sewed a lot of this dress. Are there imperfections? Yes. Um, are those imperfections easily corrected next time? Of course. So I'm taking this as a win. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I appreciate you more than you know, and I'll see you guys in my next one.